بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني فقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين so today's khutbah topic is actually individualism versus community fard versus jaliya and before i can talk about this i have to tell you a story of khalid bin al walid radiyallahu anhu and um, this story will take 15 minutes then i will going to tell you the story of umar ibn khattab for 5 minutes and then i will going to tell you one lesson out of many lesson which we can learn from this story inshallah i'm pretty sure you all understand the status of umar ibn khattab radiyallahu anhu and I'm also pretty sure that most of you, if not all, are at least aware of the name Khalid bin al-Walid radiallahu anhu. He was one of the greatest warriors of Islam. He was extremely brave, known for his courage, and he was very talented in military strategies. He was born and raised up in the environment that he was um, uh, raised in that environment where we have to, where you have to defend, you have to make a military strategy. Uh, so he was he was brilliant in that and uh, he accepted Islam later just before two years of uh, the death of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in eight year Hijri in Medina his family hated Islam to begin with in Mecca but one of his brother Walid bin al-Walid he accepted Islam early and that's why Khalid and other family members basically considered him as an outcast and he actually went to Medina with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa But the rest of the family didn't accept Islam early. So Khalid bin Walid, before even he accepted Islam, and it's an amazing story, just to tell you what was his status, subhanAllah, Khalid bin al-Walid, that he, when he was obviously not Muslim, he was one of the reasons why we Muslims lost Battle of Ahud. If you remember Battle of Ahud, which we Muslims were supposed to win, and tables were turned upside down because Khalid bin al-Walid took a big U-turn and he's basically sandwiched the Muslim archers and the battle which we were supposed to win, we ended up in losing almost 70 companions. It was because Khalid bin al-Walid radiallahu anhu, at that time he was not Muslim. So it, he really hurt or harmed Muslim at that time in the Uhud. Then later on, if you see the history or Sira books, even in the Battle of Trenches, Ahzab, he was assigned by the Mushrikeen that you have to attack Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Even in Hudaybiyah, he was assigned you have to harm or attack Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And when he realized that neither in Battle of Trench nor in Hudaybiyah, I can even get close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then there are a few incidents happen in his life which forced him to accept Islam. First thing which is stuck in his heart, that he said, Qultu ar-rajul mamnu' he says, how can I, Khalid bin Walid, who have mastered the military art, cannot even go close to this person? There's something, some, someone is defending him. So that thing is stuck in his heart. That despite of all my efforts, I'm Khalid bin Walid, but still I cannot go to this close to this person. There's something. So that thing is stuck in his heart. After Hudaybiyah, he came back and he found out that his brother who accepted Islam, Walid bin al-Walid, he sent a letter to Khalid bin al-Walid from Medina to Mecca. And when he actually opened that letter, he found out that Walid bin al-Walid, who's already Muslim, he's saying in that letter, Khalid, where are you? A person of your intelligence, a person of your smartness, he could easily gauge what is true and what is false. Why you are taking such a long time? And then Walid bin al-Walid said in the letter, even Rasulullah sallallahu is asking about you. Aina Khalid. Subhanallah. Can you imagine the harm which he caused in Ahad? And instead of hating him, Rasulullah is asking his brother, when Khalid will accept Islam and he will come and join our forces. So he's asking, Aina Khalid. Rasulullah is asking me, where is Khalid? Fakultu yati Allahu bi. And I'm saying to Rasulullah sallallahu that Allah will bring him soon, Rasulullah sallallahu and then Rasulullah says, Ma misluhu jahil al Islam, walu kana jahala nikayatahu wahiddahu wa ma'al muslimin, kana khayrallahu. That a person of his caliber should not take that much time to know what is true and what is false. 
This letter was the second thing which was stuck to Khalid bin al-Walid. That I have caused so much harm, but still they are waiting for me to join them. Then after reading that letter, Khalid bin Walid narrates the same story. He said, I went to sleep. And then he was sleeping, and then he saw a dream. And the dream was, he says, I saw in a dream that I was in a land which was very narrow, very dry, very narrow. And I'm going to a land or earth which is very wide and very green and very beautiful. He woke up from this dream and he says, this means that I am going to Medina to accept Islam. Subhanallah. And he's the person who have caused so much harm. He was a vicious enemy of Islam, he and his family. But he wanted to discuss with his friends. So he says, okay, let me actually ask my friends if they want to join me in this journey. But this is very challenging because most of his friends were vicious enemy of Islam. So he went to discuss with Ikrim bin, bin Abi Jahl, son of Abu Jahl. That what do you think about accepting Islam? I have seen these things. And then he actually discussed with Safan bin Umayyah. Um, and at that time, obviously, these great people like Ikram bin Abi Jahl became later Muslim. But at that time, he was vicious enemy of Islam. So when he heard that Khalid is talking about accepting Islam, Khalid says, They rejected it. They said, what's, what's, go, what's wrong with you? Are you crazy? You are accepting Islam? Don't you know what they have done with our ancestors? Don't even talk about that. And Khalid bin Wali said, okay, leave it, leave it. And then he went to another his friend, that's Uthman bin Talha. He says, I'm planning to accept Islam. What do you think? He says, okay, let's go together. So Khalid bin Walid and Uthman bin Talha, radiallahu anhumah, they left Mecca. As they left Mecca, they saw another young intellect cream leader of Mecca. He's leaving Mecca and he's going towards Medina. That's Amr bin al-As, radiallahu anh. The person who conquers the uh, Misr. And Khalid didn't know, radiallahu anh, that why Amr is going towards the Medina. Neither Amr know why Khalid is going towards Medina. Because Islamophobic environment was there. So Khalid, radiallahu anh, immediately asked Amr. He says, Wama akhrajaka? Amr, where are you going? And Amr, radiallahu anh, did not want to say, I'm going to accept Islam. So he says, Wama akhrajakuma? Actually, where both of you are going? You tell me first. Then Khalid bin Walid have a personality, strong personality, black and white, he says, at the of Islam. See, we are heading towards Medina to accept Islam. And Amr bin al radiallahu anh, said, actually, I am going to accept Islam also. Let's go together. SubhanAllah. Three of them went to Medina. They met in the outskirts of Medina, their brother, Walid bin al-Walid. When they met, Khalid met his brother, Walid bin al-Walid. He thought that he will be extremely happy. He'll be surprised that I'm coming. Walid bin al-Walid said to Khalid that where were you? Rasulullah already told us that you are coming. Subhanallah. And he's waiting for you. Let's come. And three of them went and they accepted Islam. Subhanallah. Once they accepted Islam, Khalid bin Walid had that guilt. The harm he caused to Muslim community in Uhud. So he asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, please seek forgiveness on my behalf. The harm which I caused to Muslim community. You have to understand this. He's walking in the streets of Medina. Maybe widows are there from Uhud. Orphans are there from Uhud. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this to Khalid. Rasulullah says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Islamu yajibu ma kana qablahu. That Khalid accepting Islam erases, eradicates all these sins and shortcomings. So all of your sins are forgiven, no worries. Subhanallah. After that, after that, he became the Khalid bin Wal Walid we know of. After that, Muslims had battle of Mu'tah. And he got the title of Saif min Suyufillah, Sword of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then whichever battle he participated in Muslim community, whether it's Mu'ta, whether it's Yarmouk, whether it's against Ridda, whether it's against the dinars of Zakah, Muslims won convincingly. And the word in the market was that whichever battle Khalid participates, Muslims will win convincingly. If Khalid will come, they'll say, yes, now we will win. If Khalid is not there, 
I don't know about that. That was the mindset which Khalid bin al-Walid bring to the Muslim community, subhanAllah. Then comes Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. When Rasulullah sallam passed away, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an became Khalifa. And when Abu Bakr passed away, Umar radiallahu an became Khalifa. All people have different leadership style. So Abu Bakr radiallahu an leadership style was different than Umar radiallahu an. One aspect was, as Salabi argues, that Abu Bakr used to give freedom to his governors. You don't need to report to me about the spoils of war or how much money you are giving to whom. You are governor, you make your decision, give me the results. On the other hand, Umar, when he was working under Abu Bakr, he used to advise Abu Bakr that, no, we are responsible, this is people's money. So we should hold our governors accountable for every single penny. And that was Umar's personality. And we can argue back and forth who was successful. On paper, we saw the success, subhanAllah. So, when Umar, when Abu Bakr became Khalifa, he used Khalid bin Walid in all different strategies. He would use to send Khalid to Iraq because Muslims would need you in Iraq. Then he would send Khalid to Sham because Muslims need you in Sham. So that was Khalid bin al Walid's impression that wherever Khalid will go, he will going to win for us. Then Umar ibn Khattab came. And then that's where I want to focus in this story. We all know the status of Khalid bin Walid for now, inshallah. Okay? Now let's listen to this. Umar ibn Khattab became Khalifa. And just want to tell you who was Umar ibn Khattab. He was the person who will held himself accountable in front of people. He would held his family accountable. And then he would held his governors accountable for even a single penny. That personality we had in Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh. Just few examples before I can come for his Khalid and his interaction. Once someone gave a rug, a mat to the wife of Umar ibn Khattab during his Khilafah. Atiqa bin Zaid. A mat, a prayer mat, rug. And Umar came back and he asked, who gave you this? He said, I received in a gift. And Umar became really mad. How can a wife of Khalifa receive this gift? It will impact our decision making. That was Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh. One of his son, Asim bin Umar. He went to Iraq. Some people gave him something, materialistic thing. He came back and he told his father, see, I received these things. And he became mad at Asim bin Umar. He says, you got this because you are my son. Just give all these things in public treasury department, Baytul Mal. You're not supposed to keep any of these things. He was Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh. And the same thing he had for his governors. So when he became governor, when he became Khalifa, he wrote to his governors, all of them, including Khalid bin al-Walid, who was in Sham at that time. And he says that you are supposed to report me, even if you are giving a single sheep or single camel to someone as a governor, you're supposed to report to me. And Khalid bin al-Walid said this to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh. Khalid bin al-Walid is also a very strong personality. He says, He says, Umar, either you leave me to do my things or you can do it by yourself. Don't micromanage. Now this happens all the time in companies and organization. It does not mean Umar was bad. It does not mean Khalid was bad. It's just their working style were different. Their personalities were different. Both of them were a strong personality. Then Umar said, okay. And by the way, remember, Khalid bin Walid was a superstar in Muslim community. Omar said, okay, then you are dismissed. You have to work under a, another companion I'm sending and he's new governor. This is a big decision. If you think about it, people would start gossiping. Oh, why Omar have dismissed Khalid bin al-Walid? Why he did ma'zul? Why, why, what's going on? There's something going on between them. And Omar sent Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, another famous companion, Amin of this Ummah, that you are governor and Khalid have to work under you. This is the first time Khalid was dismissed. But this was on the serious one. But still gossiping started. Then, under Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah, Muslims won a bigger area of Syria, of greater Sham. And Abu Ubaid needed someone who can be the governor of the area Qinasriyin. So Abu Ubaid appointed Khalid again. That okay, now you were working under me for a long time because Omar said this, but now we need a governor of controlling this area. So now you are in charge of this area. And when Omar heard this news, 
Umar was very happy. Umar said, Khalid have appointed himself again. It means Khalid have a natural talent, and he gained that title again. Things were going smoothly. In these four years, when Khalid was in charge of Qinasri and Abu Bada was in charge of the Greater Sham, Muslims won so many things, so many things. Damascus, Qinasri, and so on, so forth. Then comes the second dismissal of Khalid and Walid. And that's where our discussion will be. Muslims army, led by Khalid, they got spoils of war near Qinasri from Byzantine territory. And Khalid bin Walid as a governor, he gave 10,000 dirhams to someone for reconciling the heart. Mu'allifatu qulubuhum. And Umar heard about this. And Umar said 10,000 dirhams to one person? He wrote a letter immediately to Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah. He says, immediately dis dismiss Khalid and immediately terminate him from all the military activities and ask him to come to me to justify why he gave that. And this was a big decision. Because you have to understand Khalid bin al-Walid was a superstar of that. Of that society, that community. Then, few people went by the way. Now, Umar uh, Khalid is leaving the Syria. And few people, they wanted to give farewell to Khalid. And this story, subhanAllah, is amazing. So they were giving farewell to Khalid. And Khalid gave a farewell speech in Syria. And Khalid radiallahu anh said, Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar ibn Khattab have dismissed me. And now I have to leave. Few shabab, few young people, they stood and they said, Khalid, it's time for fitna. Do you understand this? Those of you who have worked with a group, you will understand this. We cannot take this. It's time for fitna. It's unjust with you. And Khalid, if that would have been any other person than Khalid radiallahu anh, people like me and you, we would have exploited the situation. Khalid radiallahu anh, knew what's coming. So he says, no, no, no chance of fitna. Until the son of Ibn Khattab is alive, there will be no fitna forever. And he left. Such a mature statement. Was he hurt? Yes, he would clarify to Umar Ibn Khattab. But did he create something? No. If he would have given any other kind of a statement which would have created fitna, could you imagine what Khilafah would have looked like? He went to Umar Ibn Khattab radiallahu anh. And he actually complained to Umar ibn al-Khattab directly. He said to Umar ibn al-Khattab, فَبِاللَّهِ إِنَّكَ فِي أَمْرِ لَغَيْرُ مُجْمِلٍ He said to Umar ibn al-Khattab, يَا أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ You were, wallahi, you were not kind to me. Khalid radiallahu anh is saying to Umar ibn al-Khattab, that wallahi, you were not kind to me. And then Umar said the famous, famous words, this is my khutbah topic. Umar said to Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anh, he says, Ya Khalid, Wallahi, innaka alayya la kareem, wa innaka ilayya la habib. He says, Khalid, you are dearer to me. You are beloved to me. And then he says, Wa kataba al-ila al-amsar, inni lam a'azidu Khalidan ala sukhtatin wa la khayana, wa la kinna al-naas fakhammuhu wa futinu bi, fakhiftu an yu'kalu ilayhi, fa'ahbabtu an ya'lamu anna allaha huwa al-sani'a. He says, Khalid, wallahi, I did not dismiss you because you had any misconduct or khayana or because I had any personal grudge. I removed you because you were potentially becoming fitna for Muslim community. And I wanted to let everyone know that the victory does not come from Khalid and Umar. Victory comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says his famous words. And then he says, فَقَدْ خَابَتْ أُمَّةً he says that institution will going to destroy themselves. They would never be successful. That institution would be leading towards failure if they were going to let one person handle all of their affairs. Because then one person will collapse, the entire institution will collapse. And subhanAllah, if you think about it, Umar removed Khalid bin Khalid Walid and he sent Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah. And in leadership of Abu Bada al Jarrah, we won Al Quds Bayt al Maqdis. Subhanallah. So that was a very smart move. Anyway, we all have heard this story before, but maybe some of you have heard this for the first time. By the way, Khalid ibn Walid on his deathbed, he, he said to the people around him, um, because he died in the Khilafah of Umar ibn Khattab, and 
And he, he said, he made it clear that initially I was a little upset with Umar on this decision. But then I realized that's his personality. He removed Musanna from Iraq. He will do this all the time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he passed away, radiallahu an, Umar was crying in Medina. And Umar said, وَمَا مِن دُمُوعِنَّ عَلَى سُلَيْمَانِ Let the weepers weep. Let the people cry because today Abu Sulaiman have passed away. Today Khalid and Walid passed away. Radiallahu an. Both had mutual respect for each other at the end. Okay, why I'm telling you this? There are two lessons from the last point. Individualism versus community. There is a, this is a sign of failure of any nation that they would depend so much on one person that when one person will collapse, the entire organization, entire community will collapse. When Muslim community becomes corrupt, not at that time, but nowadays, when Muslim community becomes corrupt, they tend to become obsessed with individual more than the mission of Allah and more than the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's where these disasters will come. Whether it's an imam, sheikh, speaker, president, brother or sister as a volunteer, we all will come and we all will go. We all will enter, we all will leave. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion will continue. What we have to do? First, there are two things and then inshallah I will end. First, for myself and then from the community perspective, if you, are, if you start thinking, that if I will going to leave Worcester Islamic Center, if I won't volunteer my time, then this masjid will collapse. Then you have real psychological and spiritual issues. Wallahu la yuhibbu kulla mukhtalim fakhur. Allah doesn't like that. This masjid, this community and other communities, they were served before you were born. And they will be inshallah continue even once you will go. It is your, you got the honor of serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion. Whether this masjid or any other masjid or anything, associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But do not have that mentality that once I will leave this masjid will collapse. Let me see how they're going to operate. No, 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 no. Who are we? Who are we? Subhanallah. If there is any person who is deserving that after his death, this religion will stop, that was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But even about him, Allah says, وَمَا Muhammad illa Rasul قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرَّسُولِ أَفَإِمْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلَ in qalabtum ala aqabikum if prophet muhammad will die rasulullah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this if allah, rasulullah will die will you leave religion we all know the statement of abu bakr siddiq right man kana ya'budu allah fa inna allah hayy la yamut those who worship allah let them remember allah is all living and those who worship muhammad peace be upon him let them know that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away as very famous poet says, So this is the first thing. Never think that if I were going to leave, no one should do anything about Islam because this was will collapse, this organization will collapse. That's a disaster. You are not bigger than Khalid and Walid. I'm not bigger than Khalid and Walid. Radiallahu anhu. Second thing, second thing. We as a community should stop taking individuals to the level that they become fit enough for themselves and they become fit enough for others. This is our responsibility. Because we spoil the habits of people by our praises, by our compliments, by our immature statements. Whether it's sheikh, imam, speaker, so on, so forth, whoever it is, volunteer, brother, sister, keep it at their level. Respect them, but do not take them at the level that they become fit enough for themselves and they become fit enough for others. If you will come to me, Imam Asif, mashallah, you, ever since you joined Worcester Islamic Center, we have seen flourishing. No, it's because of the entire team effort. If I will go, inshallah, this masjid will flourish. Before I came, this masjid was flourishing. I just joined the team. That effort should be there. So as a community, we should be there. Um, uh, we should become more responsible. You know, if tomorrow, if tomorrow, if you will find out your favorite speaker, your sheikh, your in, the one who inspired you for the religion has become atheist. That should not bother you because your relationship is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you will say, oh, so, so, and so thing, a scandal came, such and such. It happens because you are connected to that individual. Take that idol out, throw it away. You, your loyalty, your dedication, your sincerity should be only towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this maturity, inshallah.
Let's make dua for the entire Ummah. Allah man sul Islam wal Muslimin. Allah man zulman khazal adina Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa la taj'al la ma'hum. Allahumma la taj'al la nazanban illa ghafarta. Wa la hamman illa farrajta. Wa la dainan illa qadayta. Wa la hajatan min hawaij dunya wal akhirah illa qadayta. Ya arhamar rahimin. Wa la maridan illa shafayta. Wa la maytan illa rahimta. Wa la dhalan illa hadayta. Arhamar rahimin. Allahu Akbar.